Hello and welcome to another edition of Streetwave Learning Center. I'm Matt Jennings. Today we're going to talk about uh, wireless backhaul or just backhaul in general. So today we're going to define what, what a backhaul is. The simple definition is basically taking uh, information and getting it from point A to point B. And typically in a network design it's getting uh, transmitting the data from the core network out to the edge network. There are several types of backhaul. The ones we typically think about are wired, which is either copper or fiber, and uh, most recently uh, the wireless has become a viable option. People often choose a wireless backhaul over a wired backhaul for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one is probably foremost is cost. Uh, the wireless equipment is usually cheaper um, and less expensive to install. There's no permit to uh, install this equipment and the unlicensed frequency. Uh, there's no permits needed from any city government to dig up the street. Um, these things can be purchased and readily deployed in days. So we talk about wireless backhaul. Uh, what kind of equipment is it? What, what's included in all of that? Um, basically, it's usually an out, these things are located outdoors, usually on tower or building, um, and we have an antenna, a radio, and then usually some type of power. Uh, sometimes these, uh, all three of these things are located in one unit and it's all co-located together on top of a tower or outside in the building with cable running down into your uh, network closet. Sometimes they call uh, it a split mount, which has the two pieces of equipment, your antenna and your radio are split, uh, and they're separate from each other, and the antenna's on the roof or the building, and then your equipment is all located, again, down in the equipment room. Uh, the beautiful thing about all of this is that uh, once the wireless transmission all happens, it generally translates very easily right into Ethernet, fiber, uh, any Ethernet switch uh, or router, and you're back to the wired, wired world. So people often ask, how far can I go with a backhaul? Um, today we can do from building to building, so right across the street, very short uh, links, on up to you know, 30 miles plus. Um, I say 30 miles plus because once you start hitting that, that range, we start losing uh, signal. So as the, as the link gets longer, uh, the signal degrades and then therefore the throughput uh, also degrades. Um, to combat that we need to increase the gain of the link so that usually means requiring uh, larger radios or larger dish antennas to increase that gain and sometimes that's just not possible. Uh, we can't, uh, the building won't require a six foot dish or um, the radio that we want to use we don't have enough power for. Uh, various issues, also frequency uh, plays a role in that as well. There's different pricing for wireless backhaul equipment. When we look at unlicensed wireless products, uh, typically they're on the lower end, uh, plastic enclosures, and then as we move up, uh, we see, you know, for tier one carrier type grade equipment, they're in more rugged enclosures, basically can be out in the cold and in much harsher conditions. Um, as we move into license gear, that further increases the price, not only for the license that you need to buy itself, but also for the equipment. The throughput you can expect with a wireless backhaul it ranges anywhere from a megabit on up to a gigabit. Uh, and recently, manufacturers are also coming out with products that actually uh, combine these radios. You can combine two different links and actually double your throughput. So we're seeing radios of uh, and throughputs of two gigabits um, out there, which far exceeds uh, your fiber. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Streakwave TV. Please join us at Streakwave YouTube channel for more videos about wireless broadband. Or you can check us out on the web at streakwave.com.